We used to sort of do these as separate units. We're playing around with changing things. Trig is so short, we cut it even a bit shorter this year. Um, so instead of the next unit, this is sort of unit number four continued. But it's going to be all about logarithms and exponential functions. There's one new thing today. It's pretty easy. It's pretty amazing. Although we're not going to see quite how amazing until the next day that we talk about this stuff. Um, but we'll see a little bit of the magic happening today. Some, some interesting mathematical history uh, and relationships we're going to look at. Otherwise, today is all review of MHF. And here's my warning. We do logarithms like at Galt Collegiate. We do logarithms near the end of the course. And I think that's why this happens. It seems easy because it kind of is. But it very often works out to be many students' worst test of the year. And that's because it seems so easy and it's at the end of the year and you are just bogged down with your coursework from other courses, English assignments you haven't handed in, uh, science labs that are overdue. And so you're trying to get caught up on all that stuff and doing ISUs. And so you put the logarithm math homework aside. Those people that diligently do their homework don't do as much of their homework in this unit because it seems easy and then the test doesn't go very well. And the reason is because the notation is so new and you've got to have a solid, solid grasp of the notation to be able to do this. It seems easy because it is easy when you know the notation very well. And everybody thinks it's easy and then they're staring at the test and they're like, oh darn, there's like eight different kinds of questions and I'm not really confident in how you solve each of them in a slightly different way. And you, and you make little mistakes here and there. So keep that in mind. This could be an opportunity for you to nail this unit, get really high marks, that kind of stuff, because there is some of this that's easy. In fact, one of the things we're going to do on Thursday is going to like be mind-blowingly easy. You're going to be just amazed. Okay, But it's deceptively more difficult than it looks just because of the notation. Keep that in mind. Any questions about that before we get started? All right, here's our first little bit of review. I don't think you need to sketch this because you probably wouldn't be able to sketch it quite accurately enough, at least not until we label it and talk about it. We're going to talk about the green graph first. What's the equation for the green graph? What kind of function do you think it is? These are the kinds of questions. It's fine now because we haven't done this in a little while. But these are the kinds of questions where if you're like stunned, like I have no idea, I don't even know where to start. Okay, so that's a problem. Like you want to be confident in this kind of stuff. What kind of function is this? Mm, no. exponential. It's exponential. Good. Specifically, what's the equation? No. What were you going to say? Exponential. So that is of the form y equals b to the x. In this case, what's b? That's what you meant to say? Yeah, no. yeah. yeah fair enough. Yeah. So it's not 3, though. The base isn't 3. How can we figure this out? How, just by looking at the graph. It's a little bit hard from where you're sitting, but how can I figure out what the base is just by looking at the graph? No. Not the y-intercept. In fact, the y-intercept is not helpful at all. It's 10. How'd you get that? Because if x is 1, the base to 1 is just the base. So when I go up and I see that there's a point there, it's 10 to the x. So b equals 10. This is y equals 10 to the x. Um, in terms of the y-intercept, if it was 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x, y-intercept is always going to be the same. Because 2 to the 0, 3 to the 0, 4 to the 0, 10 to the 0 is always 1. Now, there's a caveat to that. If this was in some kind of transformation form, like y equals a times 10 to the x minus c plus d, okay, then you can transform it and you can have your y-intercept be anything. We don't usually do that. Often we have an a value, but we don't usually talk about shifts with exponents, not very often just because we don't, uh, and it's not really what we're doing in this either, but anyway. 
you do a bit of graphing of the exponential curve in grade 11, but then in grade 12, we actually don't very much. There's one important thing about it that we'll get to in a minute. Okay, so we've got that established. This is y equals 10 to the x. So what's the red curve? Wild guess? Oh, it kind of looks like it's uh, some kind of like flip in the y-axis or x-axis, but actually not. A flip would be like that or like that. If it was flipped in one, if it was flipped in both, then then you might be onto something, but it's something else. Henry? It's the inverse. And how do we calculate the inverse? We do, uh, we interchange the x and the y from the equation. So this ends up being x equals 10 to the y. But if I want to solve this for y, and by the way, the inverse is a reflection in the line y equals x. So if I have a line y equals x coming down here, it's a reflection in that line, right? That's what the inverse is. How would I rearrange this for y? y equals log base n. Very nice. And we know as a standard when it's log base 10, we can just write this as log. So y equals log of x. And again, you can see that it is because if I go to 10x, I get one y, which makes sense that the they just flip, right? So this is y equals log of x. The logarithmic function is the inverse of the exponential function. Okay. What we're not going to do a lot of graphing of this. What's the one thing that's really important that we can get? The one piece of understanding that we want to get out of the graph. That's helpful when we're solving equations. We're going to do some graphing. It's going to be helpful for that. Like, anybody, any idea? The asymptotes, the domain and range. So what's the domain? What's the range of each of these functions? Not just the asymptote where they don't exist, but in this case, different from lots of other functions that we've looked at, the exponential function has an asymptote at y equals. never goes below that. So its domain is x can be anything. I can throw whatever I want at that x, and this will work. Positives, negatives, fractions, it's all good. But 10 to the negative 2 isn't negative 100. Right? The negative exponent doesn't give us negative answers. It gives us a fractional answer. So these values get very small very fast, but they never go below the y-axis. So the range is restricted. Important to know. And similarly, if the range of the exponential function is restricted, the domain of the logarithmic function is restricted. And logarithmic functions have restrictions on the domain such that I can't put 0 or anything negative into the log of something. It will not work. The graph shows us that. OK? OK. So what the heck is this? Somebody give me a wild guess what that looks like. It's not a trick. It's exponential. What's the base? What would you say? Uh, you're looking at 2. Because you're right. It's around. It's just over 7. I think it's like 7.5 or something. But you're looking at 2. So if we go to 1. And follow it up, it looks like about two point. Oh, yeah, it's close to three. It's between two and three, right? So this is at one. I go up to two. It's past two and a half. So maybe around 2.6, 2.7. This isn't random. This isn't weird. This isn't, <laughs> there's something behind this. So it looks like it's approximately 2.7 to the x. Turns out there's a really, really important, really special number that's about 2.7. And this is actually the graph of y equals e to the x. Have you heard of that number e? You've heard it mentioned somewhere in passing a video or teachers mentioned it or something like that, but we don't know anything about it. Hugely important number. One of the most important numbers ever. We already know about a lot of the important numbers, like pi. What are other important numbers? 
I, exactly. Anybody know another one? Some people call it phi, some people call it phi. It's the golden ratio. You see it a little bit in the Fibonacci series and in nature, it's cool like that. We don't use it a lot in high school math. You might've seen it a bit in grade 11. I don't know, you might've talked about it. Uh, so it's kind of an important one, but not as important as these, I would venture to say. Um, I, think, I think we've got it. I think that though that I and pi and E are kind of up there, if not the most important numbers in all of mathematics. So this is y equals e to the x. Um, oh, looking at our, this is why I said to get your calculator out. My calculator has a log button. You can't see it super well right now, but it's there. And that one's just log base 10. Okay. Um, and like when I was young, that's the only button I had. I didn't have any other fancy buttons. This calculator also has a log button where I can change the base, so that can be useful if I'm doing other stuff with different bases. We have a change of base formula that can change to any base, but I, if I have this button, I don't need to use it. My calculator has another button. It's right here, e to the something. So I have to hit shift, and when I hit this button, it brings up e, and if I put in one, I'm going to get the actual value of e. So we notice that e is approximately 2.7182818. It looks like it's repeating, but it doesn't. It's irrational, never ends, never repeats. And you know, if we approximate it to two decimal places like we do with pi, it'd be 2.72. But you probably have a button on your calculator that can do that. So try to find that button. OK, so this is e. which is about 2.72. Really, really important number in exponential growth. It was just discovered sort of by happen chance in all these different, it just kept coming up in all these different places. Um, and then it turns out it's like a pretty big deal in calculus as well. So what is the inverse of that? So it's gonna be y equals log base e of x, but, yes? Yeah, exactly. This is such an important base for logarithms. Just like when we write log with no base, it means 10. We have a special way of writing log base e because we do it so much. And this is actually y equals ln of x. So that's the only new thing we're learning today is what e is and what ln is. And now we just need to know that they're inverse of each other. So when we see ln, all we mean is log base e. This is not new. This is not in any way different from what you did in MHF. 2 to the x is log base 2. Right? Like that, nothing else changes. e to the something is log base e. That's it. Okay? We just have to know that. So that's the one new thing that we're learning. It's interesting that we use e in the English language for it because e for exponential kind of seems like it works out that way. But I actually believe that it is named after the person who, um, I don't know if he was the first person to discover it. I believe like people knew that there was a number around 2.72 that was important way before. But if you haven't heard of this person, it looks like it would be pronounced Euler or something like that. But it's actually pronounced Euler. And this is a mathematician that might be the most brilliant person who's ever lived on the face of the planet. Not known as much of because a lot of the work that he does is just beyond high school. It's not like Pythagoras with Pythagorean theorem, you know what I mean? Like that you do in grade eight. All the stuff that we see for Euler comes way down the road in mathematics. But he was so prolific and have so many proofs and so many discoveries that they started attributing some of his discoveries to other people just because they, they couldn't, he, he, it was too many for him to just have to himself. So like he discovered so many things in mathematics, it's crazy, he was so prolific. One of his, I don't know, most beautiful, most simple is called Euler's formula. I'm not gonna write down the formula right now, it has to do with trigonometry, but there's a special case of his formula, okay? And it's called, the, it's called Euler's identity, and it goes something like this. I got it wrong already. E, well, not really wrong, but usually it's written in this order. E to the i times pi plus 1 equals 0. 
What do you think about that? So this is an identity because there's no x, no y in it. It's just, it's true. This is a special case of Euler's formula, which has x's in it. What do you think about this? What did we just finish saying about the most important numbers in all of mathematics? E, I, and pi are probably the three most important, like non-rational, right? What are the most important rational numbers or like integers? One and zero. Super important numbers in all of mathematics. We use one and zero for all kinds of things. Intercepts, identities, like when we multiply by conjugates and stuff, we're always multiplying by one. How can the five most important numbers in all of mathematics be related in the most simplistic way that there's not even one other number in that identity? There's, it's not like squared. There's nothing else going on in there except a plus sign and an equal sign. That is unbelievable. Euler thought this was so beautiful that it was proof of God. So that was a long time ago. I'm not so sure about that. But it's pretty incredible that it works out that this is true. Lots of brilliant people are kind of kooky. Anyway, you could also rewrite this as e to the i times pi equals negative 1. And then it doesn't have a 0 in it. But, you know, bring the 1 over and then it's all nice. And we've got all five of those beautiful numbers. And it's uh, pretty incredible. So that's Euler's identity. Anyway, that's just for fun. Let's get down to some work here. We're just going to review properties of logarithms. Let's hope this doesn't crash this time. There we go. Okay. So you can write that down for the function y equals log base b, where b is greater than 0 and x is greater than 0, blah, blah, blah. For any base b, for base e, log base b of x becomes ln of x. All that mumbo jumbo. But really, that's just all the sort of technicalities. We want to dive into this. Again, while you're writing that down, just realize that when we're thinking about those graphs, we're going to talk a bit more about what E really is and why it's so magical and so useful. Kind of like pi, it's when, when we look at it in terms of calculus, it's got this incredible property, but it comes up in other places too, which is just amazing. Um, but uh, the graph of those things, it's the domain and range that we care about. Okay, It's when we're thinking about what, what y values and what x values are admissible are going to give us solutions. That's what we need to know about graphing these things. So this is where the notation comes into play. There's so many different kinds of questions and equations that you can solve when we talk about logarithms and exponential functions. And sometimes we're rewriting, sometimes we're not. Sometimes we rewrite early, sometimes we rewrite later. We have to do some manipulation first. Like it's all these different cases. And this is where people get bogged down. But rewriting from one form to the other is a great first step if you can do it, if you're not sure where to. And you need to be able to do it like that. You need to be able to do it so quickly that it's just like a second language. This is what I mean by notation, that, that people don't learn the notation well enough, and they get confused about what a question is even asking. Like this, log base b of 1. But what this is saying, we're going we're gonna to figure out what this is. No matter what b is, b could be 2, 3, 4. b can't be negative, but it could be anything else. What? Zero. How do we get that? Well, I would think about rewriting it. How do we rewrite logarithms? Does anybody know of a special little thing that you can think of? One thing, one little statement that if you always remember this statement, you'll be able to rewrite anything. The base stays the same. That's the one thing you want to say to your, in your head a whole bunch of times. The base stays the same. The base is b. So this is b to some exponent equals 1. 
And now we can probably see, OK, it's got to be 0. So this is what I mean by rewriting, whether you do it in your head, scrap paper, in the margin off to the side, can be useful for us to understand what the relationship is happening, what we're even being asked. So what about the next one? Base stays the same. B to some exponent equals B equals just B. So that's like B to the 1. So this equals 1. Just properties. Same thing, I'm going to come over here and do these ones as well. So that means the ln of 1, like that looks like a different question. It's not. It's log base e of 1. So what is it? It's 0. Ln of e. That's just log base e of e. So that's just 1. OK? It looks different, but that's not new. E could be a variable in this case, for all we care. It's not. E is a number. OK, Okay. what about the next one? The next one's a property, not something we can solve, but we can rewrite. We can't really use exponential form for this one. It would take a few steps. Does anybody remember this property, how I can rewrite it? Crucial, crucial, crucial property in logarithms. Very nice. So the n comes down in front. It's n times log base b of x. One of the superpowers of logarithms is it can bring exponents down in line. And, the, and that gives me all kinds of new ways that I can now use algebra to like rearrange and solve. So then same thing over here. This is going to be n times ln of x. There's two ways I could look at this one. I could rewrite it in an exponential form. So the base stays the same. And then the argument and the evaluation flip. So this is the argument. This is what would be evaluated. It would be a question mark. So the question mark goes into the exponent. And there's the, ar there's the argument of b to the n, because this was like this, right? So what does the exponent have to be? It has to be n. The result is n. The other way you could think about this is I could use the, the two properties that we just looked at above, and I could write this as n log base b of b, which is n times 1, which is n, right? But this property, super important to know. If this one comes up, it's good to know as well. Uh, over here. This is going to be uh, n, because it's log base e of e to the n, so it's n. Does anybody remember this one? Adding logarithms with the same base? Uh, you put it inside one log and then multiply. Yeah, so you can multiply the arguments, and you're still doing log of the same base of the product of the arguments. So log base b of x times y, or ln which is just log base e. Notice that I keep saying that, because people think ln is new. It's not. It's a logarithm to a special base. You're learning one new thing today, that e is a special number. Pi is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. It has other definitions that you can look at if you're coming from a different perspective, but that's a typical one. What, what other irrational numbers like the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. <laughs> I is the square root of negative 1. Like these things have, so what is the definition of E? Well, we're not there yet. Thursday, we'll talk about that. Okay. There's different ways that you could think about it, but we'll talk about the calculus way on Thursday. So if when I'm adding logs with the same base, I multiply the arguments, what do I do when I'm subtracting logarithms of the same base? Hopefully it's obvious. You divide. And same thing over here for lines. This is going to be ln of x divided by y.
This last one is the funny one. I get a chuckle out of it in a sort of like maniacal way because it means somebody got a question wrong on a test, which I don't actually think is funny. But um, it's because it's so easy and people overcomplicate it because it's a bit of a weird one. And to be honest, it doesn't really come up very often naturally. But it's like, okay, so I got two Bs and an X. Anybody think the Bs might cancel and the answer is just going to be X? Because that's what happens. So the solution to this should be X. The, the answer to it is a little bit stranger. I would have to rewrite this in logarithmic notation. So the base stays the same. So it's, um, so it's log base B of something, because that would be what I'm looking for, equals log base B of X. So the something has to be X. When you write it that way, I think it's obvious. But for some reason, I'll put a question on a test, not so much in calculus, this is MHF stuff, but that would be like this. It would be 7 log base 7 of 49. And people are like, ah, must be 2. <laughs> no. Right? It's 49. So just if this happens to come up, remember that it's just the other thing <laughs> that's in there. Okay? And so same thing here. E to the lawn, which is log base E of X, is just going to be X. So those, that's just restating properties. You need, you're going to need some time to get familiar with this. Um, you got all day tomorrow, Thursday. Won't depend a huge amount on this stuff. So you probably have the whole weekend to really practice your logarithmic notation to try as hard as you can to really nail it before you come back next week. And the better you are at it, the better off you're going to be in this unit, the rest of this unit. Any questions so far? We're all okay with that? Okay, let's, so a lot of this is just practice rewriting in different forms and re-familiarizing ourselves with these uh, concepts and relationships and connections between logarithmic form and exponential form, that kind of thing. In MHF, I talk about this as being like learning a new language. You remember those of you that were had me? We talked about that. And like when you're first learning a new language, like let's say you learn French, if you're in French immersion, you spend your first years translating everything that somebody says, thinking about to English, thinking about it in English, developing your answer in English, retranslating your answer back into French to answer in French. And that's why we're so slow when we first start to learn. But if any of you have ever learned a second language, eventually when you get good enough, you start thinking in that language. And you don't have to translate back and forth. That's when you know you're starting to become or have become bilingual. If you're thinking in the language that you're currently speaking in. Logarithms is kind of the same. If you have to, if you have to uh, translate everything back into exponential form every single time, you're not really fluent yet in logarithms. You want to get to a point where you're thinking in logarithms. This first question just says, write in exponential form. This is a good one because we probably all know what the actual relationship is. It's, do you think it's 32 to the 5 equals 2? Probably that's true, right? I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to bother checking it on my calculator right now, but you know maybe that's true. But I think we know that 2 to the 5 is 32. If you had a panic attack on a quiz or a test, and you're like, oh my gosh, what was that statement that Mr. Belair banged his fists on the desk and he told us to remember, and now I can't remember what it was? Like, put it into your calculator and check. Just check one. With if you have a log button, log base two of eight. Oops, not twenty-eight. Log base two of eight. Shouldn't that be three? Because two to the three is eight. Or if you know this one, two to the four, two to the five. Those are ones we know. Three to the three. Be careful of when you use the same number twice. But three to the three is twenty-seven. Like some of these we know, right? Three squared is nine. You could do that one. Log base three of nine should be two. Don't use two to the two. That's the worst example in all of mathematics to be teaching things. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 to the 2 is 4. It's a disaster, right? Bad way to learn about relationships of exponents and multiplication and stuff. Anyway, let's move on. How do I rewrite this one in exponential form? First of all, you might write it out in logarithmic form. This is log base e of 44 is approximately 
Base stays the same. The other two numbers flip. Oops, not equals, approximately 44. On my calculator, and you can do this with me to make sure that your calculator, that your lawn button is working. Lawn of 44, 3.4. Does everybody have a lawn button? Anybody not have it? It doesn't have the lawn button on it. Okay, good. I kind of thought everybody would, but. Rewrite in logarithmic form. Base stays the same. Other two parts flip. Better than log base E is lawn of 148.41. Will be approximately 5. Let's check that. I showed you this before, but we're going to do it again. On my calculator, it's shift. And this button gives me E to whatever exponent I want. So if I put in 5, I should get the right answer. If you're rounding, yeah. But like if the question was something like that. Yes. I, we, you won't ever have to answer a question like this, but yes. You wouldn't say equals, you would say approximately. I, there, are, there are technical, dif whoops, <laughs> technical differences between this, 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 this. Like they're all kind, we kind of use them interchangeably to mean like approximately or rounded, but some people are probably more picky and, and would say one means this and one means this and whatever, but yeah, they kind of all just mean approximately for us. Oops. What about this one? What would you do for this one? It's a little bit wonky in the way it looks. What do you think we should do? Yeah, write, an exp write, it, write the radical stuff out exponentially like you kind of got a peek at there. Apparently, I didn't erase it from last time. So e to the 2 over 3, make sure you get that right, not 3 over 2, is approximately 1.948. Base stays the same. This is log base e or ln of 1.948 will be approximately 2 over 3. So again, shift e. 2 divided by 3, 1.9477, 1.948. Folks, it looks so easy because it is, because it's just notation. But you're not familiar with it. you got to nail this stuff. Okay? you got to really, really, really become fluent with the notation. Okay, so some of this is just calculator work. Check that your calculator is working again. Punch that into your calculator. It wants two decimal places, so this works out to 4.96. For the next one. Let's see, e is between 2 and 3. 2 to the 4 is 16. 3 to the 4 is? 81? Does anybody know that one? 81? So our answer would better be somewhere between 16 and 81. That's not a very good range for estimating. It's going to be a bit closer to 81 because e is a bit closer to 3. But uh, just generally speaking, we kind of know that. So anyway, looks like 54. Oh, then we're even, I could even see somebody in calculus rounding wrong here. Definitely up to grade 11, people struggle rounding this one. So this is, if I was doing three decimal places, oops, it would be 54.598. The 8 rounds the 9 up to, the, to a 10, which makes the 5 a 6. Or I think of this as the 8 rounds 59 to 60. That's how I think about it. And when you were asked for two decimal places, oh my goodness, yes, you need to put both. 
It's not six, it's six zero. Because that's just the level of accuracy that you've calculated this to, which matters in science, engineering, that kind of thing, right? So you include as much accuracy as you can. So you would include both there. Say that again. Yeah, because these are irrational numbers. But depending on what you're doing, it may or may not matter. I always say things like, if this is a measurement in kilometers and you're firing a missile, it probably matters because <laughs> this is hundreds of meters off. You know, if you're putting up studs to build a wall in your basement and this is in millimeters or inches, it probably doesn't matter because wood's very forgiving and you can just hit it with a hammer and it'll fit. So it depends on what you're doing. Okay, e to the lawn of 12. I'm going to put this into my calculator. Shift e to the lawn of 12. Thank you very much. We should know this one. We should just be able to get this one. But I'm also doing this because I just noticed that for my calculator in particular, it doesn't care about brackets unless I'm in an exponent or in a fraction. So if I hit equals like this, it's going to give me an error. It's just something about the quirkiness of this calculator that it, it requires me to close the bracket because it's in an exponent. And this will be exactly 12. Somebody asked this morning, do we put 12.00 because you're rounding to decimal? No. This is exact. You leave it as exact, even if it says round. And similarly, this is ln of e to the 61, oops, which had better be 61. Any questions about those? Okay. Again, sometimes these are the ones where like it's pretty easy when you see somebody else's solution to it. There's not a lot of steps. But you might look at that and go, uh, I don't know how to solve that. I have no idea what to do. What do you think we do? OK, so rewrite an exponential form. When in doubt, do that, right? Base stays the same. This is going to be x equals base e to the 10. 10 in the x switch. And so e to the 10. Uh, if it was exact, you'd leave it, but and we're going to do more exact than decimal stuff, but sometimes we want to do decimal stuff. So just practicing using our calculator to evaluate these things. This works out to 22,026.4658. Yeah. E to the 10, yeah. Yeah. We're going to do that next. How in the world do we solve this? This one's different. That one was a logarithmic equation. We solved it by rewriting in exponential form. This was an exponential equation. We're going to solve it by rewriting in logarithmic form. Make up your mind. So this one is going to be 3x. Base stays the same. I'm going to write this out one more time. This is log base e of 50. But really, this is 3x equals ln of 50 which is x equals ln of 50 over 3. We're going to do this all in one step on our calculator. Close bracket divided by 3 equals 1.3040. Try this one, same idea. So the base stays the same. Base is e. So it's e to the 1.1. And that's 2x equals. Divide both sides by 2.
oops, shift e to the 1.1 divided by 2, 1.5021. Good? Okay. Example 5 is our last example. We've got a few to do here. See what I mean? We're doing all the types that we saw in MHF, reviewing all of these things. A lot of the stuff we've done up till now is like just getting familiar with the notation and how you rewrite things. But this one is like if I'm sketching and I need to find the x-intercepts, then I have to solve an equation. So we got to know how to solve these equations as well. This one looks like it's already been factored. So this is ln, whoops, ln of x equals negative 2 and ln of x equals 3. Are we okay with that? Base stays the same. x equals e to the negative 2. If I needed a positive exponent, that's just 1 over e squared, or x equals e cubed. We'll leave these as exact. <coughs> Easy enough? What is this one? Yeah, it's like a simple trinomial, right? So this is like a squared minus 3a minus 10 equals 0. So we're just going to factor it. And I get the same thing, a couple of answers that are pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we're going to talk about on Thursday. All right, two more examples. Ooh, what's, oh, yeah, two more cool examples. What's going on in this one? Anybody have an idea on how to solve it? Sometimes we do questions a bit like this in MHF, but we didn't really this year. But I bet you you have an idea about this one. Kate, what do you think? You can always come and factor. So what would you do? Yeah, common factor out e to the x. It's just a thing that's been multiplied, like x squared or something like that, right? I saw a couple other hands up. Is that what you were thinking? Common factor out. Nice, good spot. Because this is that's a little bit of, it's a little bit different. You've seen things kind of like this, but not quite that. Okay, so that means e to the x is zero, and x cubed minus eight is zero. So this is probably easiest to solve by isolating. What about that one? When in doubt, rewrite it. x equals log base e, so ln of 0. ln of 0. What happened? 
Exactly. Remember the graphs. This is what I talked about. There's restrictions on these things. What exponent can I raise a number to that will turn it into zero? Nothing. That's the asymptote y equals zero in the exponential function. So it, right there, we could have seen, well, this is never going to happen. But when we do this and we get an error, that reminds us, oh, yes. So no solution. So I've got one solution of x equals 2. One more question. Ah, yeah, another really nice one. What's the trick to this one? Not common factor, but rewrite like this. Nice spot. That's not something that maybe we've seen before. But when I'm taking a power of a power, I multiply the exponents. So can't I undo that and get the 2 up here? And then again, just like the one above it, a squared plus a minus 6, which is a plus 3, a minus 2. So this becomes e to the x plus 3 e to the x minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, e to the x equals negative 3 and e to the x equals positive 2. Rewriting, x equals ln of negative 3, x equals ln of 2. So ln of 2 is fine. I'll leave that one like that because we're doing exact. What about ln of negative 3? I mean, try it. Error. Again, the domain is ln only works, logarithms only work with positive numbers. Not 0 and not negatives. So this is also no solution.